Dante's Discussion. Welcome back to another edition of a Dante's Discussion Answers, where we take your answers from the previous question and put it here for everybody to see. For your enjoyment, my enjoyment, everybody's enjoyment. Let's do it. Of course, this is about Dark Souls 3, and the question I posed was, what is the most underrated or underutilized or not used or you know basically what weapon should be used that isn't used what weapon is better than people think that's my question and you guys posted the answers now these are answers only from the youtube community because you guys are the best community for me you guys uh show me a lot of love so that's the question you guys gave the answers and let's walk through it and let's see what you guys put down because uh, some of these answers are really interesting. And uh, I want to see if there's any rebuttals, obviously, in the comments below after this video is posted. So uh, let's uh, get started because uh, we have quite a few of them. First up on YouTube, of course, we have Juice and the boy says, Damn, son, that fresh haircut looking good. Thank you. Thank you. But he also says a uh, very underrated weapon is the Black Knight Greatsword. It has that vertical Greatsword moveset, which makes it much more difficult to outspace. But on the R2, you can catch people off guard, especially if they tend to roll into you while trying to backstab you. The R2 has two hits, just like the Great Axe. And if the first hit connects, the entire combo will hit and decimate their HP bar. Also, the Wolf Knight Greatsword is pretty damn good compared to to the other swords because of the range also the weapon art gives it some versatility the horizontal double sweep is decent but the flip is marginally useful uh juice also says also the black knight uh halved with decent poise um i'm i am guessing glaive black knight glaive with decent poise is pretty damn awesome it has decent range in the damage and with the right amount of patience, it can outplay uh, many different weapons. That is true. And to go back with the Faran or the Wolf uh, Greatsword real quick, one thing maybe some people don't know is that with that uh, the move set, it's very interesting. So you can actually, and I believe it works one-handed if you have a weapon art uh, shield in your left hand. So... You get a strike, and then you do... Well, you don't do that weapon art. Sorry, I don't know this. I don't know this weapon. So you get a strike, and it, they got to be close, though. So you get a strike, and then you do a spin, and you're almost guaranteed at least a second hit there. Or even a third hit on a roll punish. But it it's like a combo that works because you have to get away, and you never expect someone not to strike twice. So you strike once. And then you do the spin and you get it. I don't know if it does more damage, but it's just interesting because the range on the spin is interesting. But yeah, I mean, even the jumping attack here, the weapon R2 R is interesting because it stuns right in the beginning. And then you can get massive damage. But the range, I mean, if you calculate when someone's going to attack, especially if they have a slower weapon, you can just bash them down. It has decent hyper armor as well. So that is interesting. Robert Haunting says, if I had to be picky, probably Onyx Blade, main argument is this. Just a few frames slower than Straight Sword. Longer reach. A good poke R2. Unparable weapon art that really hits hard. This weapon art? <laughs> it actually does hit. I don't think it hit that hard, but uh, good AR on a dedicated build, chip damage through shields, and access to spells. It's underrated uh, because ever since Demon Scar was a thing, you never see this weapon anymore. And I don't know why. It literally, it, It's literally the longest range greatsword in the game. Pairs exceptionally well with any shield, catalyst, crossbow, etc. Its stat requirements are lower than any other greatsword in the game besides Storm Ruler. I just don't see why this weapon is neglected, especially with the whole dark matter crap being a thing. This weapon literally does dark damage, plus its buff gives fire damage, which is useful in PvE. It's a great weapon for any Pyromancer, Dark Caster, and Dark Quality build. That is very interesting. Now, this weapon art does hit somebody if you, they are close enough, which is... A decent roll catch or a full thing because it's very slow and it no one expects it but as far as the range he is right i believe it does have the largest range it's ridiculous every now and then I'll, i get hit by this weapon i'm like what the hell like you get hit from crazy distances and the roll punish on the r2 is okay because of said range 
But the one thing that makes this much more interesting and much more viable than and what he said in his comments is that uh, because of the stat requirements and sort of building up the damage with the dark damage on this, you're able to utilize other spells that are much more interesting, much less seen, and definitely much, uh, really can fool a lot of people into getting hits, stuns, damage, and wins, kills, and whatever. Like, it, it, so there's a lot of versatility to this because it's not just the weapon that makes it good. It's the other things you can also do with the weapon. I mean, this weapon itself has the hyper armor, has the range, has the damage, and through shields. So I can definitely see why that is a viable pick for one of the most, if not the most, underused weapons and underrated weapons in the game. But I do see people use this weapon occasionally. So it's not as underrated as maybe you think. People do use it. Maybe they don't utilize it as well as you think they should. But I do see people use this from time to time. Jason Todd says, man, serpent, hatchet, ladies and gentlemen. Axe moveset is fantastic for roll caching. It has innate uh, shield chip, which only gets better with dark infusion. So, you can infuse this, but you can also just buff this with a resin. So, you get the whatever uh, refined stats or sharp or heavy or whatever you want to go with. So, you can save stats in your other things. And you can utilize this and buff it if you wanted to. And it has crazy range. Goes through shields. Roll punishes like the best of them. It is, in my opinion, it's got to be top five underrated weapons in the entire game. I've beat a lot of high profile players with this. Um, I think it is. I think you're right, Jason Todd. I think this is definitely on the list. The short list of underrated weapons because of the range. The chip damage, now it seems to be more uh, relevant than before. Um, there are certain matchups, like most weapons, that have a problem with this weapon, but also deal with this weapon good. So, a weapon that deals with this good is really quick weapons because it doesn't have the hyper armor. But, there are specialty things about it. So, you get extreme hyper armor if you time your L2 correctly. So if there is a quicker weapon and you just do that near him, either you'll get the stun and you can do a jump attack because usually somebody will, they'll roll out scared. I mean, but there's so many ways to utilize this weapon. And not only that, this weapon one handed is tremendous. So you have a either quicker left handed weapon or even put this in your left hand and you can roll punish people for days. I, this is one of my favorite weapons in the entire game i think it is grossly underutilized grossly underrated thank you jason todd for being a man after my own damn heart i'm glad somebody said it otherwise i was gonna have to say it i love this damn weapon it is one of my favorites it looks demented and oh mm, mm, mm. way of white marcus says mace heavy infused 60 strength excellent damage Third R1, roll catches, two hand, decent hyper armor, plus perseverance, unlock poise for a small, uh, relatively fast weapon, which makes it the best choice for a strength user wishing to two hand. Yeah, I mean, it's too slow in my opinion. Um, and obviously, the perseverance is a scary thing. You can just tank basically anything and do massive damage to somebody. And yes, that third R1, because of that step up, is a roll punish champion and that goes for most of the well not most but uh morning star and maybe a few others but uh yeah i mean you get hyper armor now with the uh smaller hammers uh through the r1 so small weapons you can deal with decently easily but you also have perseverance which starts up decently fast it's still the r1's too slow somebody can get a hit in roll away um i still think hammers are really bad in this game because a lot of prediction based and if that your opponent isn't aggressive enough, like how are you going to rush them down? I would almost like for situations like that, do you need to ha have some sort of katana or some sort of run weapon with you? I don't know. That's my problem. I understand why you think it's underutilized. I've never seen any. Well, I have seen people try to use it, but the problem is you stay away from it and you stay away from obviously their perseverance and you understand that unless i have a big weapon i can't trade with this i have to like you know stick and move over and over which sucks it's annoying but it's the way this game is made 
So is it underutilized? Maybe. Is it underrated? Mm, it's all about play styles on this thing. I want to see someone who's really good with it. But I have seen some unlocked play that have interesting ranges on this. So maybe a better player with a hammer than me can show me why it's underrated. Daniel Wiley says, Partisan, pretty beast when paired with a weapon art shield. Yeah, this is a weapon that I think is underrated and got way better after the buff. So the buff was it got hyper armor in its weapon art. And I think that makes it a really good weapon for uh, quicker weapons. Now, obviously, the hyper armor is not really going to go through a... I don't even think it goes through a great, great sword, but it's definitely not going to go through any ultra. Definitely no a great hammer at all so but it has obviously the running attack it has the really decent range um and the r2 is just spectacular for roll punishing roll catching people um the weapon r is a little bit skittish though because you do the weapon r sometimes and you just straight up miss because somebody will strafe you hard and now of course you do get the spin but that third attack sort of leaves you open but i definitely think this is a great weapon you have to use it right obviously but it's a great weapon and paired with the weapon art shield, like you said, where you can basically just do an R1 weapon art, just smack people down from a distance, run away, do a run attack, somebody's coming in, and then, whoop, hyper armor. Like, there's a lot of ways to use this weapon, and um, I definitely think it is underrated in that category. Al Alduin Dovax says, Pontiff Knight Great Scythe. Good God, it has a tad bit less range than the standard giant ass scythe, the droppable one. But damn, the zoning. You don't need to infuse it for S rating and pop that frostbite for the style points. If you manage to get the frostbite proc, you can swap to a better weapon. I recommend the longer scythe. Two-handed is great at harassing R1, R1, and hold the R2 for a bit. Or do a jump attack to roll catch. I just love the scythe moveset and playstyle. You outrange most common weapons. It's a super safe weapon and super lightweight. The other scythe is good as well. It has even a longer range. And you can either hollow sharp or bleed and fuse it depending on your build. Try this one. One of the scythes has the super long range we crave. Wield one in each hand. Luck build. Left one has bleed and fusion. Right one has hollow plus rouge applied. <laughs> Now know that if you hit a R1 with the Scythe moveset, you are guaranteed an L1. So if you can land both, you do, you'll do, you do metric F tons of damage with the new, with uh, the raw physical damage and the bleed procs. Try to maintain spacing. The Scythe is powerful zoning weapon and people try to skirt around it. Remember that the Scythe does more damage at the end of its hitbox. So get familiar with your range using two hand and one hand. It can pub stomp if you take the time to learn it um sides are one of those weapons that i always thought because of its range and because of its weird timings if you got to learn a scythe you can do extremely well against just about any weapon rarely will you get destroyed if you will if like that's your main if that is your weapon because of its interesting ways and interesting move set um, the learning curve is crazy high, though, for it. And that's where I think things get interesting. So the running R2 sucks. It's not great. It has decent range, but you switch to the running R1, really good range. And it has a sweeping attack. Basically, you know, your whole 180 in the front. And uh, it's just, it's one of these interesting weapons where switching, and like he's saying, spacing is key. Like, you really can outspace most things if you just sort of pre-fire. You can do unlocks. And you can do a lot of things. And one of the best combos is if you get the R1 in, do an R2. And then usually you can get the roll catch R1 fairly easily. But he's saying using two of them and you can get an R1, L1 and you get super bleed procs. And that's after the nerf of bleed. That's pretty incredible. And I, I really want to see this Dovac. I, let's do it. I mean, you're probably on PC or something like that. But man, that is what I want to see. Those are the type of players I want to see. Somebody who mains a really difficult weapon to use. I mean... It's difficult to master. It's it's easy to use like most weapons, but to master it, to actually make it be able to be viable against a lot of the other metas, a lot of curved swords, you know, straight swords, that's hard to do. I mean, granted, this doesn't have hyper armor or anything, but look at that. Style points. You can put <laughs> you can put some um, 
and some frost on there. So frost, create a bone chilling frost with each swing of the great sight that causes a temporary frost effect. So putting frost on there, I mean, if you get the frost proc, kudos to you. But a lot of times if you slightly miss, <clears throat> you can get a little bit of buildup and maybe get that one last hit that'll proc it. I definitely agree with you that size in general, and I don't know if this one is the best one. I mean, I, I would usually think one that has more range is the best, but um, size in general are just hard to use. But I really do think that they are something special in this game that if somebody mained it and somebody really took the time to learn it, could do incredibly well with it. And I do think it's underutilized, and I definitely think it's underrated, but I haven't really seen many people utilize it that well. Some people, but I'm looking for unlocked, switching between one hand, two hand, run attack, that type stuff, wombo combos, you know, I, that's what I'm looking for, and uh, I think you're spot on. I think sides are, are interesting, and I feel like you know what you're talking about with them, and I, I really appreciate that. Julio Orange stops by, says four prong plow, likely the best spear in the game. Most people will underestimate it, especially if you cosplay as a peasant hollow. And with less than 30% carry weight, you can flank people for days. Also, shout out to the pike. It has an amazing range, and because no one sees it, they never fight it, meaning they usually get their spacing wrong for easy damage. Oh, yeah, four plong plow weapon art isn't that bad. If you hit people with it, expect to get 500 plus damage and a little humili humiliation bonus. Straight up, you are correct. Um, four prong plow. I do think is a good weapon. There's no doubt about that. Most spears you can utilize uh, running attacks and such. But I mean, it's just the fact that you, this has the range. It has the running attack. I mean, it has decent damage. And you can buff it if you do uh, refined or whatever is best for it sharp. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with this that are really great. Uh, the weapon art isn't great. Um, I don't... It, it, it's not that great. Like, falling over, doing the full weapon art. It's awesome. It can be humi humiliating, but it's not too fantastic. I do, I don't think it is underrated though. Um, I have seen people use this weapon and utilize it here and there. You know, mostly on the better player side. Um, so you know, people are a little bit hip to this weapon. I actually say I see this more than a partisan, but maybe that's just me. Maybe just because it looks awesome and it actually has five prongs, but uh, we don't talk about the fifth one. Amir Khan Kermasi? Kermaki? Kermasi? Not sure how that last name is. But uh, he says easily, or she, I guess. <laughs> no, nah, it's probably a he. Uh, he. He says easily, great sort of judgment is. It used to suck so much, but it got buffed in one of the older patches. Now it's a beast. In a 27 strength, 40 dex, 40 intelligence build, this has 600 AR, and the buff adds 80 magic damage on top of that. Even though its AR is split, the numbers are so high that it doesn't make it different anyway. In duels, I hit people for 370, 400 per, one, per R1 easily. It's uh, the hardest hitting greatsword on the right build, and the weapon art is so fun to use, especially the beam. Uh, locked on it's kind of crap but if you learn to free aim it you can snipe people for a good 400 and 450 damage uh, you are correct actually I use this weapon and even though it is split damage if you have the right build and you really put the stats in there it's so damn high like it doesn't take away from it it's crazy uh, so I have used this weapon and I've utilized the damage potential of it and I will say, I've seen very few people use it. Really, people, I think, just like the R2, that it shoots uh, a little, like, um, I don't know, like a guile sonic boom. Uh, but, yeah, this thing can do massive damage. And it's a great sword, so it, it has the hyper armor. It, it has potential to be absolutely obliterating to people's health bars. And uh, if, you, if you play someone with just 1,600 health, most likely four R1s is just gonna kill him. It is that powerful in the right build. It can be crazy. Uh, I do agree that as far as damage is concerned, it's definitely underrated. Um, the range, mm, I don't know what the, the Hollow Slayer it, that has like there's there's benefits of that hyper armor starting up crazy early. So you know part of it is how well can you play? Is that is the damage slight damage increase better than the better hyper armor i don't know i guess maybe that depends on your your play style 
Here we go. Guild of Souls is going to give his top two. And as the combo man of the community, of course, saying on PS4, you already know both the weapons I list will have some combos. Number two, the Storm Curve Sword, the one hand kick utilizing move set on Curve Swords are actually pretty good. In addition, it has some good combo potential, such as the two hand R1, L2, R2, or R2, L2, R2. The R2 start. Up can even work with one handed leading to an R2, L2, R2 with the weapon, R shield, or empty hand. Hell, even R2, R1 combos. <laughs> Him and his combos. I mean, I love them, but some of them are so hard to get. It's ridiculous. Um, and number one. Ah, my personal favorite weapon in this game. Every day I use it, I love it more to the point where I've made a build for it. The Crucifix of the Mad King. R1 and L2. And the gamble at the end if you want it. Do you want the gamble? If you get the scream, guaranteed damage. If uh, even if it's outspaced, I've seen many people get hit with this lingering hitbox. Then there is the poise. Not only is it the longest uh, perseverance buff in the game, it seems to be the strongest. For example, if you face tank a Lido's pancake with a Cessus perseverance, you can be outpoised. I've been knocked out of it and hit to the ground while it was active, only to go, damn. Guess you can't tank everything. However, I have poised right through everything even bosses like the dancer with the crucifix and the vexation bomb while i'm not good at using it yet it it has the potential to be a major comeback uh, an embarrassing death or a tie maker hell if you roll the dice twice in a row and get perseverance and the bomb you'll tank the explosion with reduced damage this can work wonders if you land one of it of its other combos such as the r2 uh, R2, L2, or R2, R1, or even the R1, L2. <laughs> even just applying pressure can make it deadly by screwing up their roll timing. All in mind, my personal favorite weapon and one I feel is underrated just because it's uh, visually out damaged by, say, the split leaf. I see people use this. Um, I do think... Oh, man, it, it's tough because... A lot of these slower weapons, um, I usually say, well, you can just sort of back away and you can wait for them. Uh, this isn't really an exception to that. However, there are definitely move uh, sets and types of this weapon, like the R2 that follows uh, some of the great hammers, which is tremendous for roll catching. But this really, it it's special if someone is trying to be aggressive. The L2 has so much poise and hyper armor. And it's so fast. So you can just tank something and if oh you think you'll you'll get out of it, just roll out of it or or maybe just keep going through it and boom, try to see what you can get with that specialty R2. Uh, this weapon is awesome. There's no doubt about that. Is it underrated? I don't know. I do see people use it. Um it is awesome. I think people can utilize it right. Got a really cool running attack, has a lot of hyper armor and a lot of its attacks. Has a lot of, like you said, combo potential, which is obviously your favorite. It is. It's an awesome weapon. I think it's really cool. Is it underrated? I don't know. Buff with Dark. I've seen people do disgusting, absurd, 1,000 plus damage in two hit combos. And then three hits, it's even worse. And just like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's underrated, but it definitely is awesome. The 21st Phantom says, my pick for the most underrated weapon would be the Wake Stone hammer good damage at 619 uh on a 66 strength build your usual two hit combos uh one hand and two hand mixing up depending on the situation good range of course and after a couple of buffs and recent recent patches the weapon art is amazing voice hyper armor for days really under the radar this one a lot of fun to use and surprises a lot of people i'm gonna be honest with you um i look at great hammers as a joke in this game uh i try to see the matchups between weapons so if i saw let's say this weapon versus a curve sword would you ever get a hit on somebody with this weapon the problem with this game is that roll punishing is almost geared towards fast and and quick weapons and it's upsetting there's very few weapons uh that are big that can roll punish 
like okay this in my experience is not um man i've got to see somebody use this i think this weapon is fantastic against bigger weapons or slower weapons basically great sword or slower against fast weapons i gotta see i mean even running after people i i don't know i i feel like i can't see it man i can't I, i'll try to believe you the weapon art is awesome the weapon art can be devastating and launch people because like you said duh, it has a incredible hyper armor and damage sure i just don't think you're gonna hit people in in some of the faster classes like at all unless you time it incredibly but even then you know oh i love that you picked it i just don't understand right now i mean that's all like that's almost saying oh the earth seeker earth seekers are underrated you think the earth seekers underrated wow you i don't even know i don't even know i put it in the comments below tell me what you think about the quake stone hammer i just don't see this being underrated i just think it's bad <laughs> but that's your opinion and that's your answer so obviously you're entitled to it maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm dumb maybe with all the buffs or something you can do something with it but i i haven't seen it banana skunk says i think the bastard sword is underrated because the claymore and executioner i can't spell blade outclass it even the flamberge is more used um i mean I, I see what you're saying i think the bastard sword is not great only because it's so short um there's nothing special about this really uh it does have that weapon art which is interesting and maybe you can poise through things you wouldn't normally but i just think other great swords especially the two that were named previously are better than this Purely because of range. I mean, they're probably even better because of damage as well. Uh, weapon art is interesting, though, that it has this, especially for how short it is. So maybe in certain fringe cases it can be, but I'm not really seeing it. Jose says, the ladle. Oh, wait. Woodman Featherhigh says, Hazel pick very rarely seen, even though it's a sorcery catalyst with a massive true combo into old moonlight and enough hyper armor to win trades with straight swords, katanas, and spears. Also, R1 roll catches a lot. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, this is a weapon I haven't actually used at all. I've not used this. I haven't really done many sorceries or really elemental builds. Um, I have done some demon scar and stuff like that. Uh, dabbled with it a little bit, but I haven't done this yet. And I've seen it very few times, but some of, some of the times I've seen it, like you said, I, the true combo happened to me. I whiffed or something. I got hit, and they did the moonlight sword on me, um, and I think you can do a running, like a, a nice running sorcery cast like for chip damage here and there, and like you said, it can hyper armor through some of the smaller weapons because it is in the hammer class. Also, because it's thrust, I think Leo Ring might also do something as well. Um, I agree. I actually, I mean, this isn't a weapon I use, but based on everything you said, I never see it. And there are many good combos with it. It's not like so slow where it's freaking worthless. Um, running attack's not even the worst. It You can utilize range battle. You can try to close the gap with other things, scare people, roll punish. Uh, I agree. I think this is a very underrated weapon. I think somebody can get really good with this weapon and take down some really good players um and look flashy and awesome doing it uh illustrator el javi says okay so i don't know if it's underrated because it's a classic but i don't see people using it enough usually in the great sword class uh i see people using black knight moonblade flamberge i'm talking about the greatest looking sword in the game the clammy the claymore the damage is there at 33 strength and heavy infused uh version deals um uh, Version deals more damage than Gales, and the moveset is simple yet varied enough to give you room to play around. If you like the game, you want to play more, and to do so, you should go with the Claymore, son! The Clammy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, I think that the Claymore suffers that there are better weapons out there. I mean, it does have the weapon art at least, but why, why not the Hollow Slayer? I mean, why not the Hollow Slayer? What? They're the same length. Hollow Slayer's hyper armor is crazy. But 
hey, like you said, you're going for the fashion. You're going for the fashion, the greatest looking sword the world has ever seen. Gotta say, I don't know if I agree with it. Um, I definitely will say no one uses it, but honestly, this might be a case where there's probably a reason. Sadly. I just don't see why this is better than some of the others. Um, I feel like Hollow Slayer is just straight up better. But maybe that's just me. Maybe there's something I don't know about this. Uh, again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. This one just happens to be wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? I'm kidding. Dark Blood Soul says, I don't see many people use weapons out of the meta much, but I would say after the recent patches, Karthus Curved Greatsword gets S with Sharp and does a lot of damage, and the weapon art combos. Uh, combo is really deadly after an R1. Yeah, I mean, I've seen this. This weapon do disgusting damage up. Upwards of 800, I think, and that's pretty common, and it has bleed in it, which is bad, but if you're hitting somebody with the combo, which does one, two, three, four, I think, four little hits, that's close to bleed proc, and especially if maybe you whiffed on attack earlier and they got a slight bleed proc so i could definitely see this being something just for the bleed for the combo for the damage for the hyper armor um running attack whiffs maybe bleeding uh, uh building up the bleed i can see this being a little bit underutilized underrated uh i never see anybody use this curved greatsword either it's the exile um actually it's mostly the exile the exile and every now and then the dlc herald one but uh yeah, no, I, I think I can see why you think that um, it, it's interesting against uh, even faster matchups like straight swords and stuff like that. I mean, with bleed, goes through shields. I could see it. I could see it being underrated. Ian Brundrit says, something else to add on top of the man server that, that makes it the best action, in my opinion, is that it naturally trip, uh, chips through shields and either buffing or infusing it with dark can make it a great counter to turtles my underrated weapon however weapon uh, is uh the saint biden when dark infused the buff it got makes it fade scaling pretty good and if you're a dark quality build then a dark infusion can work wonders with it yeah the damage can be disgusting and deceiving with it although split still decently high enough um to cause some problems for your opponents now, most spheres have good running attacks, and, you know, you can chase people and do certain things. Uh, this spear, I don't think, is as good as some of the others. Uh, and I would say, especially in the weapon art department, the weapon art doesn't do that much damage. It's unfortunate. It does have the hyper armor, so is it underrated versus others? Maybe a little bit for the damage. Maybe for the chip damage, especially if shields are in the meta, which... For some players, it is, so having that chip damage is kind of a big deal. So, is this better? Is this underrated? Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't see it too often. Every now and then, someone will switch to it if they're having problems and they are this type of faithy, dark type build. So, I can see that. And definitely with some repost or, or backstabs, uh, this can do some massive damage because of the elemental it has that doesn't take any uh, defensive on those reposts. So... Eh, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Random stuff and C. Nine says four prong plow. Simply the best spear in the game for PvP. Dark and Fuse, you have a good damage. Okay, read, but what makes it underrated and the best spear in the game is the janky hitbox, which almost no one seems to notice. We all know about the best halberd, curved swords, stray swords, etc., but the spear is simply a basic weapon everyone forgets. Personally, for me, the war pick and mace are also great weapons no one seems to notice, but they're simply not plow level, which I presume to be uh, right below the straight sword and shield and car, uh, curved sword god tier of weapons. Both of those comments are for 1v1 duels only. It is quite interesting because uh, most of these weapons I am considering for 1v1, but there is a whole really subset of weapons who would mostly be garbage and 1v1 but actually do very well in 2v2 but uh, that's not really how i'm considering what's underrated not really a 2v2 thing but it is interesting to think about that anyway but yeah um the plow the plow makes another appearance here i mean that that it just it the running attack obviously um the weapon art's not great i don't like it and you can fall over if you do it but uh it is funny at least and you can look like a peasant it's it can be buffed 
you know, there's ways to get some interesting damages out of it. And of course that janky, slurpy, sloppy, freaking hit detection, hitbox, um, a little bit different because of the wider range of its actual tip. Um, I don't know if that actually takes into account its space, uh, but if it does, then it does have an edge on some, uh, definitely some spears out there. So that would be interesting. Andre Stan 2, for me, the most underrated weapon in the game is Black Knight Glaive in the sense I don't see anyone using it, which is strange because it's a beast of a weapon. It has the range, hyper armor, an awesome combo, one of the best R2s in the game that combos into another true combo. It's my favorite weapon. I honestly have a 90% win rate with it. I only lose to other glaives or laggy people. Yeah, that is interesting, though, that you said you only lose to other glaives because wouldn't that mean those other glaives are better? That's interesting. Or maybe this is just better in, in other matchups and against glaives or hyper armor weapons is not as good. I mean, I know the, the nerf on the hyper armor on this where the startup is much later um, sort of affect this a lot, which I wish they would do with every weapon because hyper armor is just like dumb. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see the combo. You got the, the R, well, that's, that's also hyper armor, but R1, L2, R1, that's a combo. And like you said, uh, the R2, it, it had caught me a lot of times before. This R2, boom, this little jump, because it, it's radius, and if you unlock, somebody tries to roll behind you, you're going to hit him. Uh, the roll punish is real on this. It's awesome, because no one expects it. And it, it, it is really cool, I, I got to say. Duh. It's cool. Is it underrated? I don't know, because I actually do still see some people use it. Not as much because the split leaf is a thing, but <clears throat> I don't know. People still know it's good. There's a way to play it, but uh, definitely be scared of the combos because it, it can get pretty gross. Harold S. says, though I haven't played much Dark Souls 3 PvP, I'm going to just guess it's the post-buff Great Lance. The weapon isn't l ludicrously good, but it's, it's a weapon many people don't use because of the crap state it started out in. Many people loved how the Great Lance looked and wanted... And wanted to use it, but uh, very few have stuck with it. Now it's a decent weapon. I haven't seen a significant increase in people using it, though. Rip Dark Souls 2 Lance, though. Wish I had more experience with this, but my current PC can barely handle the game, so I'm only going to put hours into it when I get the new one in a while. Yeah, this got a huge buff, and it's a buff it needed because it was absolutely trashed here. Um, it's still not fantastic against certain types of players. So if you have a player that is trying to backstab fish you, you actually can deal with them decently well with this. Um, but if they have a sort of slurpy connection, you're in trouble or people who are basically just trying to parry. Um, and the weapon art is one of the best parts of this. Now this weapon, part of the problem with this weapon and I do think it's slightly underrated, but not as much as a lot of the other weapons we've mentioned here, is that sometimes you can get the R1, L1 combo. And sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can get the R1 and R1. And sometimes you can't. But the hyper armor on the two-hand R1 is fantastic. And a lot of people don't know that here's how you play with this weapon. I'm going to show you with the controller here. <clears throat> here, here's, here's how you play with this weapon. You're locked on to somebody, and you want to attack them? Let go of your left hand. Let go of your left hand, and just press R1, R1. That's it, if you're locked on. That's how you play with this weapon. Let go. Do not touch any of the thumbsticks, or else you will lose, you will fail, you will get backstabbed, you will get crushed. It is so sensitive. If you barely touch your character, you will miss, straight up. And the R2 is tremendous in that as well. R2 is really good for people who are trying to stay close with the shield. And they don't don't expect it. You do it twice in a row and the lock-on is incredibly good. Um, most people don't expect it. But again, if the connection is weird, you will get backstabbed. There's definitely a little bit of learning curve. But I love this weapon. It's still not great against certain types of players. But you can get some wins in, some hits in here or there. Here we go. JS Pumpkin King. That's right, the man himself. Coming back with another gigantic book. Putting in his top three, he says, Before anything, I just want to say that I haven't done PvP since Eternity Dark Souls 3, since all of the sudden 
Indonesian internet, which is my region internet, by the way, suddenly gone effed up since last December. So my knowledge in PvP is only based on my observation from streams or videos. Okay, so in my honest opinion, the most underused, underrated weapon in the entire game is the broadsword. Yes, the one, the only broadsword. It's a straight sword. You got versatility of the weapon class. Strongest straight sword in the entire game. As well, if you go for refined 44, the strength and dex people seem to neglect it because it's rather short. But aside from the fact uh, that it's the shortest, I don't think it's that bad either. Or maybe not the broadsword. Maybe more like the bastard sword swear word sorry can't help it at all similar moveset and attack rating to the claymore and it has the uppercut stomp skill of an ultra but again it's short maybe that's why people don't use it oh now i remember it's that era thill rapier the most underrated and underused weapon in the entire game seriously i can't find a single drawback of this weapon it's the strongest rapier in terms of damage great range excellent speed crazy good weapon art since shield splitter has uh shield splitter's been buffed hard oh wow why don't i see it often is beyond me all right then to wrap it up third place is broadsword then bastard sword and then top number one underrated weapon in the game that people don't seem to use under some goddamn apparent how should i know why reason is really beyond me reason the only one the one and only, the only thing of one things, Irithyll Rapier, ladies and gentlemen. Well, if you ask me why I don't use the Irithyll Rapier, it's simply because I'm a filthy tryhard that loves the visual design of the Pharaon Greatsword. Can't help it, though. I fall in love with an aesthetically beautiful sword, and that's that. P.S. If you want to use the Shield Splitter weapon art on the Irithyll Rapier, don't forget to use the classic trademark war cry, HAS! Oh, yes. Ugh. This weapon, um, I actually am surprised that this weapon isn't used as much. I will say it is much shorter than the rapier. Or than, uh, I'm sorry, the um, S-Dock. So, well, let, let's look at it here. I think it's much shorter. Yeah, it, it is. It's shorter. Yeah. Okay. I uh, Just making sure. For a second, I, I thought I was wrong. It's shorter, which is kind of a big deal. But with the extremely high frost buildup was 55 um it's kind of crazy that it has that high i don't know how many hits that is maybe three four um which is not hard to do with the rapier uh, the rapier has some quick attacks that is interesting actually is that the same for all rapiers is it is two-handing rapiers just like a joke is that what's going on yeah, I think that's what it is. So one-handed rapier. I mean, doing this, I, I could see this being grossly underutilized. I mean, like you said, shield splitter. Duh. Um, probably not gonna hit many people. Shield splitter is still too slow, but for roll punishes, it's not awful. But again, it is still too slow, which is unfortunate. Sometimes you actually don't even get the roll punish. What you get is after they're done rolling, thinking, "Oh, you're not gonna be able to reach me." That type of hit. I can definitely see why you think this is a little bit underrated. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's underrated more for its frost than for being a rapier. I think all the rapiers are just better than this. It doesn't have a good R2. I like the R... Well, maybe it's maybe I'm not utilizing it well, but I like the R2 of the uh, S-Dock a little bit better. But, yeah, I can definitely see... Uh, I, I never see anybody use this. Straight up. I, I don't even know if I've ever seen anybody use it. But... Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's underrated, but maybe it is a little bit. Maybe it just is a slight tad bit. And then we have for the last comment here about the answers of which is the most underrated weapon. I pair you says S-Dock. S-Dock number one, ladies and gentlemen. Most underused. I'm pretty sure that's a joke. As far as I've even been uh, told, on PC, S-Dock reigns supreme. I guess because PC has better um, internet connections generally, so I'm assuming I guess they just connect better. I mean that R1 is a roll punish extraordinary because of the range. You put it in your left hand, you run after somebody, and they think you're gonna do like a running attack. You just stop, do an R1 roll punish. It, it's crazy. There's a lot of things you can do, and it's why it can be dangerous because it can, can be paired with Yorms, which I see, and it. it it can be completely dangerous and 
Duh. Shield splitter with that added bonus range of being the longest. I mean, look at this thing. This is longer than straight swords. Ridiculous how gigantic this thing is. But yeah, I appreciate everybody's comments here. This was YouTube only because I love you guys. You guys are are basically making me do these videos. I'm the slave to you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I thought some of the some of the great swords like the the claymore and the bastard sword. I I gotta say I don't know why you think it's underrated. Uh, the quake stone hammer blew my mind. But at least. That's different enough where it's like, well, I just don't know enough about it, maybe. I mean, I've used it, but, man, it is slow and it's not great, in my opinion. I mean, you can just wait that weapon out and win. Um, so, I mean, I was so shocked on some of the replies, some of the responses, but I'm glad you you were here. If you have any comments, if, maybe if you tell me I'm wrong, maybe you're I'm dumb and I don't know how to use any weapons, put it in the comments below. Tell me what weapons you think. Tell me what weapons you're surprised no one put. Uh, try to rebuttal some of the weapons people put or whatever put it in the comments below Let's have some fun with this. I like talking about these weapons I like like sort of categorizing and listing rating these weapons. So let me know what you think like comment subscribe and I will be back